to the custom colors or global colors I made earlier, I made some color that I want to use now. And I've selected two parts of my Sacred Heart, and this is the red I want to use. Got it? Yeah. This brown here, whatever that is, that color, that is this custom color here. So if I give it this red again, and then I, you're with me, right? Double click and change the color to a darker red shade. It is not using that custom color anymore. This swatch is no longer selected. This swatch is no longer selected. So here I can now uh, lighten it a bit. I have a new custom color I wanna keep and it goes with this one. So I'm gonna drag it right before. And these are my heart colors. So I could get back to that original color here. I wanted to use the flame color. This was the flame color that it originally had. And same thing. I want to put, click, holding the shift key, a variation of that color for the detail of these flames. This is the last part about color I'll be talking about right now. So here's the original color. And then if I double click and I make a variation on that color, make it a little darker like that. This is not that color anymore. That custom color is not selected. So if I want to keep this with the friend I made it from, I drag it into the palette and that reviews how to do a custom color and what I planned to do with my custom colors from before. Man minus, this is what I have right now. Some really basic things still need to be fixed, but this is easy work. Click, shift click to select this global color. Uh, I don't know if he really needs all those weird colors on there. I wanted to simplify this. That was sort of the idea in the first place. So that is how to begin making a distinctly unique looking artwork and some tips for working with Trace, Live Trace and Illustrator. The next part of class does deal with these two items, which are the clipping masks and clipping paths and importing images. So clipping and importing again. So save your file and we'll talk about that in the next minute or two.